Well, Razorback fans, this team sucks. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and Natty State Sports. Dot com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more because right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday night slash Thursday morning slash Thursday, whatever. Um, wow. Wow. I'm at a loss, folks. I, I, I really am. I have tried to, tr- I've, I've, I've truly tried to make sense out of this basketball team. I have tried to think that and try to think of ways that this team would improve, this team could get better, this team could figure it out. And not only have they not been able to figure it out and not been better and gotten better. But they've gotten significantly worse, and they are flirting. They are flirting with being the worst Razorback basketball team I've seen in 20 years. That's a fact. I I mean, if I would have told you before the season started that Arkansas would be sitting at 10-9 and in overall, 1-5 and in conference play, And coming off in that conference slate of the first six games. Having the worst beating you've ever taken in Bud Walton history against Auburn. And also including the worst loss you've ever taken against Ole Miss, at least in 50 years. None of you would have believed me. I couldn't have even said it with a straight face. At worst, I honestly, truly believe that this team, at worst, would have been a 18-19 win team. And that would have been if just it went to disaster mode. Worst case scenario, they barely get into the NCAA tournament. Maybe be one of those playing games up in Dayton. Like that, that's how I felt like would have been the worst. Case scenario. But this is unfathomable. This is, this is, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Like, really, truly. Even in the times where I felt like, for instance, Razorback football was going to be good and they ended up not being, there was at least a, something that you could see kind of what the writing on the wall. Like, even in the Chad Morris years, I predicted that Arkansas was going to be like a 6 and 6 team his first year and they weren't. And I felt like they were going to be like a 6 and 6 team the next year and they weren't. But that was so like comically bad by a comically bad coach that it almost wasn't even worth my time of revisiting and saying, "Well, I'm so confused why this team is 2 and 10." No, it was just the coach sucked. I mean, this past year in football, it was a year I thought that Arkansas would go 7 and 5, 8 and 4. They didn't. But at least in parts of it, it's like, I, you know, you could make sense out of it. The offensive line wasn't good. They couldn't block. The offense was a problem. Chemistry was a problem. Like, you could at least point your finger to it and say, well, this is the issue. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make you feel better. But at least here's the issue. But with this basketball team, folks, I have no idea. Because they're not good at anything. There's not a redeeming quality about them right now. How did this team beat Duke? How did this team beat Purdue in the exhibition? How has this team won games? I've never, I I just, Jermon Mark did not play in this game. He had migraines. Okay. 
I mean, even if Tremont Mark played, I wasn't expecting Arkansas to win, and I wasn't going to pick Arkansas to win. But you put up 51 points. You lose to Ole Miss, 77 to 51. Caleb Battle had 11 points in this game on two of nine from the field. Joseph Pinion was your second leading scorer off the bench with 10 points. Two of five from three. Arkansas had 13 assists to 14 turnovers. They shot 17 of 51. They made 17 field goals. 17. That's good enough for a whopping 33.3, repeating, of course, percentage. 5 of 22 from 3, 22%. 12 of 18 from the free throw line, 67.7%. But that didn't even matter. The defense wasn't even good. Ole Miss shot 47% from the field, 37% from three. They only shot 10 free throws. Arkansas couldn't even foul them. They couldn't even, they couldn't even have them go to the free throw line. Jalen Murray for Miss, Ole Miss had 21 points, 18 for Morrell, 11 for Brakefield, 10 for Allen Flanagan. Yes, he does play at Ole Miss. I don't, I don't even know. Like every this this it's over. Like this this just mailing it, pack it up, mail it in. It's over. What a waste. What an absolute waste. It's it looks like a team that's never played basketball before, and it's really disappointing. I'm not coming down on individual players. I'm not saying it's one player's fault. Everyone has blame. There's plenty of blame to go around for what is happening. But there are guys that I feel like are talented. There's guys that you, you have experience with. There's guys like, dude, Caleb Battle at times looked like a beast offensively. Couldn't miss. I think he's shooting like 2% in SEC play. There was a time L. Ellis looked like a, a dude that could help out and distribute. My man was the only one that didn't have a negative plus minus. He was at zero. Him and Bayfall, which, yeah, Bayfall played. Devo Davis. Devo Devo looks done with this team. He looks done. D-O-N-E, Dunzo. He played seven and a half minutes, got benched. He took one shot and at a turnover. That was his stat line. Dunzo. Keon Minifield had the worst, plus minus, minus 23. Three of 10 from the field, seven points. Trevin Brazil looks, I don't even know what to make of him. He shot the ball once. It was a three. 12 minutes played, three points, four rebounds. Three turnovers. How are you supposed to get behind this team? You can't. They've they've mailed it in. They've quit. It's over. It's done. And I feel bad. I feel bad for Razorback fans because basketball was supposed to be a real good saving grace for them after the miserable football season. I feel bad for... You know, the the fans that were so excited and having to go to the games, like, for instance, this weekend with Kentucky coming to town, game day is going to be there. I don't know why. But I'm just, again, I'm at a loss. I, I, I wish I could explain it to you. I wish I could say this is what's wrong with the team because that's a question I get more so than anything is people just asking, what's wrong with the team? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that they are horrible. They're horrible. They are not being, they're not coachable, it doesn't look like. It, it seems like a team that does not like each other. It seems like a team that does not trust each other. There's no leadership. There's no drive. There's no effort. There's no life. There's nothing. How did we get to this point? I mean, say what you want about Eric Musselman and his teams, but even last year when the team had their struggles, the effort was there. 
The go-to was there. They went all in on it. You never left the game feeling like, man, this team quit. This team sucks. This team gave up. And that was a bunch of freshmen on that team. 18-year-old kids. Half the team was 18-year-old kids. And this is a team full of upperclassmen, and I can't believe it, but last year's team showed so much more maturity and life and want to than anybody on this team combined. Like, it's just, it is so disappointing, and it is so annoying. I feel bad for you, Razorback fans. I really do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You deserve better than this. For basketball especially. And I'm not someone that's sitting here saying that the coaching staff and Muss is completely and totally without blame. I'm not saying that. But I also ain't saying fire Muss either. Or going all in saying this is just, oh, Muss is, you know, terrible. Like, what this looks like to me was just the, the getting the team together. Had some talented guys that he wanted putting it all together in a roster and him being like, all right, I make it work all the time. I'm going to make this one work too. And swing and a miss. It is not. It's not working. Nothing works. But is there something that they can salvage this season? Something that must can salvage? Is there something that they can do to make this season at least have some sort of interest in entertainment? We'll talk about that in a second. But folks, passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to help maintain your vehicle. You can level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits to LED headlights and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. So with all the parts that you need, with all the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. All right, all right, all right. Now, I teased it a little bit as far as, is there something that Muss and this basketball team can salvage this year? Is there something that they can do, show? To me, on the court... No, no, it's it just, I have zero faith. And if they're not going to try hard and if they're not going to put the effort into it, and if they're not going to give it their all, then why should you? And why should I? So it's, it's gone. So what can be salvaged? What can be brought out from this season? What can be done? Well, since the season's over in my mind, doesn't matter. But here's what I do believe can be going to the glass half full, maybe going to optimism, whatever. But here's what I believe can be done. This could be an an incredible learning opportunity, the opportunity and an incredible lesson learned by Eric Musselman. Muss is a phenomenal coach. The man's forgotten more basketball than I could ever even learn. He is still, in my mind, one of the best coaches in college basketball. He is still, in my mind, an absolute ruthless and relentless worker. And I believe he is the ultimate promoter and marketer, which is important in today's game. But I also think that there can be times where You think it's going to work. You think it's going to work out. You think it's going to be put together because it's like, hey, I I know that I can just throw me a roster and I can make it work. You know, like there's some people that have that get to that point. And it's not necessarily a negative thing in the way of he had no business doing that. It's, you know, I feel like it's one of the lines from the movie Apollo 13 and one of my favorite movies. But 
Uh, and Apollo 13, one of the things that they talked about is like, hey, if there was a washing machine, my Jimmy could land it. If they or if they got a washing machine to fly, my Jimmy could land it. It's kind of, that's kind of how a lot of people are, where it's like, you, as a coach, it's like, give me a bunch of players. I don't care where they're at, and I'm going to win with them. That's what a lot of coaches have done and can do. And Muss is 100% in that regard part of that group. Like He has proven it, that there's been turnover and there's been new rosters, there's been new changes, and he's found ways to win. But this is one that just did not work. It didn't work. You know, you, you light a few fuses, and sometimes they light, and sometimes they don't. No, it, it it's as simple as that to me. Just hasn't lit. Hasn't just hasn't been lit. Sucks. No excuse for it. Not justifying it, but that's what it is. So, what can you learn from it? Well, my hope is that Coach Muss and the coaching staff can learn from the fact that. The type of team and the type of players that they approach. And it could be not only the talent on the court, but I think more so even the the culture and the personalities and the, the overall vibe from their guys. That they just need to not have and maybe see some things and in, in, in more studying or more research or more just cautiously viewing it to where it's not going to be the red flags that maybe you could have seen with this team before. Learning that, hey, with this player that we may be recruiting, let's look at this part. Let's look at this element of his game, or let's look at this part of his personality. And if it shows any signs of what some of the guys may have had this year or some of the issues may have been this year, we're out. We don't need that. We don't want to deal with that. It's a problem. Muss has coached a long time. Long time. But I think even coaches can always be learning and adapting and adjusting. I mean, that's what we all do. I mean, even with me, uh, not to make it too personal, but you know, with this new company, Natty State Sports, that I've started, it's just I have learned a lot already in just two weeks. You know, I think I know all about broadcasting and all about podcasting and all about you know what works and what doesn't work. And and I get into this realm and I'm like, hmm, this is a whole new animal to me. This is a whole new thing, and I'm learning a lot. But that's how you strive to be better in everything that you do. And Musk, again, is a hard worker, as hard a worker as I've ever seen in a coach. So I have no doubt that he's going to continue to work really hard. Who knows? Maybe he's already working on next year's team. Maybe they're going up against players, and they're like, hey, I like him. Let's see if he gets in the portal so we can get him. Who knows? But – to me, that's really the only thing that you can salvage at this point is just a lesson. Something you've learned. Something that you can't let happen again. That's my hope. That's all my hope is right now for Razorback basketball. Baseball season, though, right? Around the corner for Arkansas. Dave Van Horn has a press conference and also some scrimmages coming up, so give your thought uh, give you my thoughts on that on the other side of the break so stay with us on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast You are Locked On Razorbacks your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day All right so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast uh Razorback baseball Dave Van Horn's meeting with the media and uh, hopefully there's nothing but good news coming out of his press conference. I don't think anybody from the Razorback fan base can deal with any more bad news. Razorback baseball, I hate to put it on you. You got to save Arkansas fans. You have to. You got to. Like, if there was ever a time where you had to be the 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 shining beacon of hope and the overall just savior of this feeling that Razorback fans are going through now is the time and luckily for Arkansas fans I cannot wait for everybody to get mad at me for saying this it's gonna be great but luckily for Razorback fans this year might be the year they're gonna be really good a lot of depth a lot of talent a lot of capabilities 
it's going to be really good. I've heard really good things about it. I've talked to coaches. I've talked to players. They're feeling good. Got to stay healthy. Knock on wood. But it's going to be really good. And I can't wait to hear what Dave Van Horn has to say. Just put your eggs into those baskets, shall we? Spring football maybe too? Yeah. I'm trying over here, folks. I'm really trying. I'm really trying. Appreciate everybody listening in the Locked On Razor Max podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.